Okay, this is what we're trying to make today. Uh, essentially a three-quarter scale version of the thing uh, laying against the pen on the paper here. We have some dimensions here. We'll probably um, make things a little oversized and then trim them down. For example, that 0.125 distance between one piece and the other on the uh, basic three-quarter stock is the curve of my lathe cutoff tool, which does yeah, it's a semi-crummy job. We usually wind up having to clean things up after. Um, so, here we go. Our first step is going to be to drill a um, hole for the 1032 tapping in the end piece. You can see the graphite already chucked in the uh, lathe. <clears throat> this is the first time McMaster Cars ever sent me anything with a flaw on it, but as it turns out, I don't care. We're going to grind it off anyway as per the drawing. I'm going to use a real center drill for this, even though we probably don't need it. Graphite is the soft as can be. But uh, might as well start trying to make everything perfect because that's where we want to end up. Okay, now I'm going to run my slightly off center number 22 drill uh, in about an inch deep. Um, <clears throat> being slightly off center in this case, since the graphite is so much softer than the rest of the world, means that the hole will be a little big, but that's okay for what we're doing here. Um, the hole will still be in the middle, it being a lathe and all that, and the graphite being weaker than the drill. Now you can run graphite just about any speed you want, but it machines into a very fine powder, and that's why I'm running kind of slow here, because basically I don't want to breathe a whole lot of black dust and be blown black snot for the next two days. So up we go. Just for good measure. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're out of the hole. Okay. See, that was easy. To make it easier on myself with my antiquated techniques, what I'm going to do here is just make a mark about as deep as I want to turn it down to three eighths of an inch, which turns out to be three eighths of an inch also. Uh, here's how we do that. Oops, let's just turn it off. And now I have a nice little scratch mark on my graphite to tell me how far to run the tool in. You might not be able to see it, but I can. Okay, now that I've taken a couple of small cuts, this mark is pretty obvious. Um, We'll be turning that down to about the same diameter as its length, so that flaw will just be removed. Again, I'm doing this small and in lots of low cuts because I find out it leaves less graphite dust in the air for me to breathe. Okay, that step is done. Now we're going to turn the rest of it to the point where we've kind of got rid of the mill irregularities and it's really round because the actual absolute outside diameter of this doesn't matter that much. It does matter that it's accurately round. So we'll just fix that. Surprisingly, that took about a 20 mil cut. So we now have 0.730 uh, or so OD. I might have overdone it about five mils worth. But again, it's not critical. The goal here is to do it all in one chucking. So um, we're going to do the slightly scary but fun part of going ahead and tapping the 1032 hole while we're in the lathe and before we cut anything off, just for the heck of it. I'm going to do this really slow. And I'll just wind this in until it starts to bite. In fact, I'm going to use the camera to watch what I'm doing. Come on, focus, baby. And at some point, it should just pull it, start pulling itself in. stop this and give it a little bit more personal attention. Uh, here we go, self-threading. It's pulling itself in with the, uh, until it jams. It's 
perfectly okay. We'll just tighten the uh, chuck a little bit and run the lay the other way and make it drive itself back out. Is that cool or what? Keeps working. Okay, using the same trick as before, I've marked off 140 mils of the faceplate uh, thickness that I want, uh, and I'll cut that off with my lathe cutoff tool here in a sec. I'm actually going to give myself a slight amount of fudge here because this is going to make a little bit of a messy cut, and uh, I can turn this thing around and chuck it later and in, 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 uh, the other way and make the face all shiny and stuff. So this is not crucially important that it be perfect. Until we touch and see how much touch I gave myself. Not a heck of a lot. And then we'll put the lathe on automatic feed. And we'll hold our hands under here, despite the fact that they're going to get filthy dirty. Because I want to catch this piece when it falls off, and I'm sure you don't want to watch this whole process, so I'll stop it now. Well, that cut clean enough that I'd normally just take that little ridge off with a file, but if you see the dial calipers there reading 197, you can see that I gave myself way too much fudge. Let me, uh, I'll turn that back to about 140, 145 later. For various reasons, we want the um, open end of the grid to be open, otherwise too many ions hit it from both sides and uh, just waste energy and uh, heats the grid up. So we're going to basically make it an eighth of an inch cross section by drilling a half inch hole in a three quarter inch piece. Simple, in theory. Uh, we're using a Forstner bit so as not to waste stock. It makes a nice flat uh, bottomed hole. And there we go, a nice half inch hole. I made the hole a little bit deep to make life easier for my cutoff tool. Well, I sure called that one close. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the depth of the hole was exactly right for the cutoff tool, and it left that little extra ring there. Now, in the final version, you'll notice we have all rounded corners and stuff, but we do that after we drill the real precise holes because we don't want to endanger uh, the chamfering or whatever, uh, breaking, you know, making a hole break through. And it, this stuff is so soft, it's just really trivially easy to do it by hand instead of making special lay jigs and tools for it. So, we'll be getting to that very soon. One final use for the lathe as a lathe rather than just a holding device for the drilling jig is going to be to make this um, end plate the right thickness by just turning off this face. Um, it should be a relatively piece of cake. I might not have run it in far enough to hit, but this is only the first cut. Here we go. Just cutting away the stuff from machines like chalk. Very easy. And we'll just take measurements and adjust the uh, mills of cut until we can just get a perfect cut here. No big deal for this part. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, perfectly flat, or anything. I just like it to look nice. So, from drawing on paper to near reality in under a half an hour. The sharp eye will notice I uh, accidentally ran a tool in and put a little divot in the uh, 1032 center thread on the end plate. Luckily, I think that's just not going to matter uh, for the real operation. Now we will drill the precision holds to hold the rods, like the bigger one in the upper left. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not. I sure as heck can't without the goggles on and my face in the way. Uh, we're using our uh, Solar Dave, Dave Shields uh, suggestion of using a tiny center point drill to start the holes here in my gauge. So I've already drilled the first one to make sure it would sort of drill. And so now we'll hit the magic button on the jig I showed you the other day. Move exactly 45 degrees. And we will go in exactly 20 mils. I hope that drilled a hole. I'll find out in a second. I'm going to have to get up and close and look. Oops. And here they are drilled, along with the drills that drilled them. If you can even see the points, so to speak, 
the paper is a little bit blackened because I used it as a polishing medium. It's a little bit finer than the thousand grit sandpaper I pre-polished them with. Now all I have to do is chamfer them, cut eight perfectly straight, perfectly the right length tungsten rods, which is a whole other project, and uh, put it together and try it, which is yet another whole other project. I'd have liked to show the uh, sort of semi-CNC jig that I was using here more, but unfortunately in use, uh, it's pretty tight in there and my head is in there with those uh, goggles on and you pretty much can't see uh, anything special about it going on. Sorry about that. That's just the way it works out in real life. 